Now let's take a look at the replay of the landing of Discovery. Your touchdown. And this was not near perfect. It was perfect. Commander out now rotating the nose down, standing by for nose gear and touchdown. A special salute for U.S. Navy Captain Frederick Rick Houck. How many hours, how many hours he practiced for that? How many airplanes he flew before he ever got to be an astronaut? And then how much practice? Keep in mind that no shuttle flew for the past two and a half years. And it was just practice, practice, practice over and again. And that's what brought that superb, excellent landing uh, by Rick Houck and company. So sh the Discovery is back home at Edwards Air Force Base. Now, we aren't going to see the astronauts for uh, quite a little while uh, because uh, there is a special routine, a whole process of letting the uh, shuttle cool off, uh, a whole procedure that must be gone through before we can see the astronauts. And correspondent David Dow is standing by with astronaut Jeff Hoffman at Edwards Air Force Base uh, to tell us exactly what's happening inside the shuttle capsule at the moment. Well, right now, the uh, shuttle crew is securing its instruments, uh, in effect, shutting down the shuttle as uh, a ground crew consisting of about 30 vehicles of various and sundry shapes and sizes and 150 men and women that comprise the recovery convoy are getting ready to gather around the shuttle to uh, ensure that there are no toxic fumes around it, nothing that it's brought back from its journey into space that could injure uh, anyone, inc especially including the, uh, the astronauts. Uh, it's a procedure that has some extra built-in precautions uh, from its uh, days pre-Challenger and will take longer. Another thing that will make it take longer is the fact that the flight crew wore into re-entry uh, big, new, bulky, hard-to-get-out-of uh, flight suits, uh, which have uh, built-in uh, survival equipment in them. It'll take them a little longer to get out of that, so we probably won't see the astronauts uh, come out of the shuttle for close to an hour. Jeff Hoffman, uh, the feeling inside the spacecraft when you're, you're down, all the landing gear down, the spaceship has stopped, and you've got to wait this time to uh, go through the procedure before you can get out. What, what are the astronauts thinking during this period? Well, of course, it's a great relief to get on the ground. There's a lot of very strange physiological feelings getting accustomed to gravity, so they'll be spending a little time getting used to that. Um, but there's actually quite a bit of busy work still keeping you busy before you're ready to get out. There's an in, there is really a sense of anticipation. You are, you're looking forward to getting out, seeing the people you know are out there ready to greet you, your families, your friends, uh, and you would like to get through it as soon as possible. But nevertheless, they're professionals. They've got to do their job. Dan, one note. Uh, in, a, in a flight that was uh, frequently called nearly trouble-free, one little piece of housekeeping business. Uh, a couple of hours before re-entry today, uh, NASA announced that uh, a problem that uh, had been uh, uh, slightly vexing, uh, always described as minor during this flight, a problem with the uh, shuttle's cooling system that in the repair of it had, had uh, at times driven the, the cabin temperature up uh, into the not too comfortable high 80 degrees. But that problem uh, appeared to have taken care of itself, that the icing that was uh, at the core of the problem seemed to have gone away. There were indications on uh, descent uh, just uh, just after the, uh, the uh, deorbit burn. There were indications that they might uh, have a recurrence of that problem, but apparently it turned out to be, in effect, a false alarm. Well, we're so glad to hear that. So, in effect, it's, uh, as they say, a near-perfect flight. <laughs> also at the landing today, uh, and a somewhat controversial appearance, uh, is Vice President George Bush. With him is our CBS News uh, Washington correspondent, uh, Bob Schieffer. Bob? Good morning, Dan, and uh, I must tell you, this is the first time I've ever seen one of these in all the years I've worked at uh, CBS News. Uh, this is the first time I've covered a space story, even in a peripheral way, and it's, uh, it was quite thrilling. Bob, uh, we mentioned that the appearance of Vice President Bush there uh, has been somewhat controversial, at least in some quarters. Uh, bring us up to date on that. The Vice President uh, at one time was quoted as saying, and I'll check you whether he actually said this, that he did not think it would be a good idea for Michael Dukakis, his uh, opponent for the presidency, to be out there because he thought it would, quote, politicize the event. Well, that's right. The other day, uh, Bush had a news conference, and one of the reporters, in kind of a teasing way, said, uh, well, if you really want this to be bipartisan, why don't you invite uh, Michael Dukakis to come out there with you, and the two of you will welcome the astronauts back. And he said, oh, no, that might turn it into a political event. But, of course, uh, uh, candidates, especially when they're an incumbent vice president like uh, 
the vice president. Uh, this, is, this is almost an obligatory stop, like uh, candidates used to go to Israel and Ireland before they uh, declared candidacies. Uh, this, is a, this is a perfect stage for anybody running for anything uh, to be out here associated with a success uh, uh, on a beautiful day like this uh, with a lot of patriotic uh, of feeling in the air. So this was one of the things that the vice president uh, uh, has been planning to do for quite a long time. They, uh, they did not actually tell the people here uh, at the base that he was coming in all this weekend. And uh, the commander of the operation out here said it uh, caused him to have to put a lot of people on uh, overtime uh, planning for the vice president's arrival. <laughs> Thank you, Bob Schieffer. Uh, let's replay that landing again. Let's look and listen as Discovery comes home. We come here. And on its recently strengthened landing gear and undercarriage, Discovery comes back home, all hands safe. And so the happy end of the new beginning for the United States of America in space. Discovery is home, the crew safe, the redesigned shuttle program has passed its first and hardest test, proving itself fit to fly. NASA, the can-do agency that prided itself on working, is working again.